What's up guys, I hope you're doing well. I am very excited to share with you all today about how I have scientifically proven that Christian metal makes the best worship music. I used a series of algorithms to come to this conclusion, so the results are irrefutable and you can't actually argue with me about them. Sorry. Now, when I say Christian metal, I'm not talking about Skillet. Now don't get me wrong, Comatose is an absolute banger all the way through. But my friend once said that Skillet is the nickelback of Christian rock music, and they just haven't sounded the same since. No, I'm here to talk about Christian metal. I'm talking heavy guitars, heavy kicks, and screams. And then also, when I say worship music, I'm not talking about Sunday morning church service worship. Can you imagine showing up Sunday morning and the worship pastor coming out on stage like... No, I mean worship music in the sense of music that glorifies God and allows us to feel close to Him when we listen to it and sing along with it. Just wanted to clarify those two things. So I know I don't really give off the vibe of someone who listens to heavy metal, but I do. I listen to a lot of it. So I have a high appreciation for the genre, but also I just have a solid image in my mind of what metal music is. However, when people who don't listen to metal music think of metal music, they imagine garbled noises they can't understand, guitar riffs with no melody, and death. And those thoughts are not unfounded, considering that in a lot of metal songs, those things are true. Among a lot of reasons, I think some of the biggest turnoffs from metal music and Christian metal music for a lot of people are how dark the imagery in the songs get and how aggressive the music sounds. And again, these claims are not unfounded. However, I want to say that dark imagery and anger can be found in a place that's actually very familiar to people. Now, if the Bible were a movie, it would not be rated PG with a fun for the whole family sticker slapped on the cover. In it, you've got cities being destroyed by raining fire, rivers of blood, people driving tent spikes into the heads of their enemies, children getting mauled by bears, demon possession, horrible accounts of rape, incest, and mutilation, and the gruesome crucifixion and death of Jesus. In the Psalms, you have verses like, their throat is an open grave, and are your wonders known in the land of oblivion? Revelation talks about a seven-headed dragon that tries to eat a baby as it's coming out of the womb. Basically, there are a lot of stories and verses in the Bible that aren't going to get adapted by VeggieTales anytime soon. Likewise, God isn't just some Care Bear in the sky sending down good vibes to his creation below. No, he's a God of wrath and vengeance. He burns with anger. And Jesus got angry. He flipped the temple tables. He told people to depart from him. Righteous anger is an attribute of God. Now that anger isn't unjustified, the Israelites sinned against God and worshiped idols even after he freed them from slavery. And some things never change. So it makes sense why God got angry with them. Merchants and swindlers were making a den of robbers out of the house of prayer, so Jesus righteously intervened. God and Jesus both show how anger can be godly in its proper context. So, since dark imagery was used in the Bible to glorify God and exemplify human depravity, and since righteous anger can be used to embody the Father and Son, why shouldn't our worship music include dark imagery and sound aggressive to achieve the same ends? You see, contrary to popular belief, not all metal music is Satan worship. But the fact that even some of it is just shows how desperate of a need there is in the scene for a gospel presence. No, there is metal music out there, Christian metal music, that goes hard, that sounds aggressive, that brings the dark imagery, but also worships and glorifies God in amazing ways. The song Lesser Gods by Demon Hunter talks about how in life we either choose to die to ourselves and follow Christ, or we choose to follow idols that will leave us empty. Hollow Point by Comrades talks about how hate is an infection that will only spread if we let it live within us, which echoes Jesus' words when he said to love our enemies. Lowly by Wolves at the Gate talks about how wretched we as humans are and how in need we are of a savior, and is clearly inspired by Paul's words in Romans 7.24. A Pattern in Pain by Phineas just talks about longing to leave the sufferings of this world and join our Father in heaven. Again, these songs are brutal, and I'd share them with you here if it didn't mean getting copyright claimed. They aren't what you'd hear on Sunday morning or on Caleb, but they glorify God and they lead people to Jesus in their own way. And in fact, I'd say these songs, Christian metal, has the potential to embody God even more than traditional worship music because it's countercultural and it's extreme. When Martin Luther King Jr. wrote his letter from Birmingham jail in 1963, the chief people he was writing to were the white Christian moderates of the time who, despite their religion and their claim to live like Jesus, refused to take action against the injustices committed against black Americans. And again, some things unfortunately never change. The white Christian leaders said that they couldn't and wouldn't support King or his methods because even though they were nonviolent, they were still considered extreme. And while this label of being an extremist discouraged King at first, it ultimately encouraged him after he realized that biblical figures like Paul and Amos, as well as historical figures like Martin Luther and Abraham Lincoln, were also, in their own ways, extremists. Not extremists for violence or ideology or supremacy, but extremists for truth and freedom and justice. 
They were willing to go beyond the measure of normal men to achieve the things that they fought for. And he wrote about how Jesus was the biggest extremist of them all. He said, In that dramatic scene on Calvary's Hill, three men were crucified. We must never forget that all three were crucified for the same crime, the crime of extremism. Two were extremists for immorality and thus fell below their environment. The other, Jesus Christ, was an extremist for love, truth, and goodness, and thereby rose above his environment. Christ taught the most countercultural teaching of all time, which was to love our enemies, and he committed the most extreme act of all time when he died on the cross for our sins. I mean, think about how extreme the gospel is. God sent his one and only son to live a life that we could never live and die a death that we all deserved. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The only reason anyone would ever die for someone else who they knew would just defy them and deny them time and time again would be because either they were crazy or because their love for that person was cosmically extreme. So, in my opinion, it's hard to capture the gravity of Christ's sacrifice with an acoustic guitar. Or at least it's hard when that's all you ever use. You need something that is itself countercultural and extreme. Like metal. The Bible describes Jesus' sacrifice as the culmination of the ages. I just feel like an event of eternal proportions like that necessitates music that's heavy. I think one of my favorite aspects of Christian metal music and the aspect that makes the genre so dynamic is the range of intensity that the genre allows bands to have. For bands and artists who only sing traditional worship music or only play contemporary Christian songs, the ceiling, as far as intensity of their music goes, is pretty low, so they don't have a lot of room to explore as far as intensity goes. This can make their music a bit predictable, melodically, and to the average listener, like myself, their songs can all start to sound the same. Compare that to metal music. The ceiling of intensity in metal music is pretty high, and that's where bands spend most of their time making music. And I won't argue that songs by bands who only make ultra-intense music don't all start to sound the same as well. But, since metal bands have so much more room to move and experiment with intensity, they have the freedom to turn down the intensity to traditional worship music levels. And let me tell you, when they do choose to dial it back, that contrast packs a huge punch. Skin and Bones by Fit for a King, Dead Flowers by Demon Hunter, White as Snow by Haste the Day. These slower songs, or ballads as they're sometimes called, are so stripped down melodically and lyrically poetic which contrasts beautifully with the heavy songs that surround them. And for me, that distinction just embodies God all the more. Like, God is a strong father who's characterized by such power and intensity like the heavy songs suggest, but he's also the caring father who's the calm in the storm. 1 Kings 19.11-12 describes Elijah's encounter with God. It says, Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. The loudness of the storm emphasized God's calmness within it. The danger of the storm emphasized God's peace within it. The complexity of Elijah's surroundings emphasized God's simplicity. And thus, the slow songs off of Christian metal albums emphasized God's beauty amidst his power. And with that, I close up my list of reasons why Christian metal music makes the best worship music. Remember, I used a series of algorithms to come to this conclusion, so if you disagree with me, you disagree with science. Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. I know that heavy metal and Christian metal aren't everyone's cup of tea and that modern worship music isn't going anywhere, nor should it, but I just wanted to offer my perspective on the genre and clear up some misconceptions that people may have about it. I also want to say that Christian metal isn't the only genre of music I listen to, nor should listening to heavy music replace quiet time spent with God. I feel like a video like this wouldn't be complete without a list of some of my favorite Christian metal artists. A lot of them I've already mentioned, but some of them are Demon Hunter, Wolves at the Gate, Comrades, Phineas, Red, Fit for a King, Lightworker. I've been listening to a lot of the ongoing concept lately, Memphis Mayfire, or at least their old stuff. The list goes on. Also, the Instagram page Kingdom Core is awesome. I found so many great Christian metal artists from there. And Sean, who runs the page, is doing an awesome job ministering to people in the metal scene and spreading God's love that way. So if you're interested in diving deeper into the Christian metal genre, that would be a great place to start. To finish, I want to share MLK's final thoughts on the matter. He said, Perhaps the South, the nation, and the world are in dire need of creative extremists. Whether you listen to Christian metal or not, I hope we can all go out today and find ways to be creative extremists who show God's love and share the gospel with others. Let me know in the comments what some of your favorite Christian metal bands are, or if you think Christian metal is stupid, go ahead and nail a 95-point thesis to the comments section, and I will do my best to respond to that. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe as I have more content on the way. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you all in the next one.